Love Island as a series, what makes it so special and stand out from any other reality show on TV? Because we have millions at the moment. Is that good to me? <laughs> right, okay. We'll turn to you. <laughs> I guess um, I think the subject matter is something that is so... You can connect. Anyone that you like knows what it feels like to be in love, to fall in love. And I think Love Island, you are watching over eight weeks, two people are winners. Yeah. But lots of people, everyone is falling in love in real time. And that's quite a special thing to watch. Um, when they all go in there as singles, there's that awful moment where you all couple up and you're kind of, decide, you know, that instant sort of, if it was Tinder, you're swiping left or right as to who these people are in front of you. And then in eight weeks' time, you've got two people who are in love and hopefully more. So yeah. I think that falling in love in real time is a really kind of strong thing that sort of sets it apart from everything else. Yeah. And do you remember, because obviously it started ages ago, there was a celebrity Love Island as well. How much has it developed since then? So that was in 2005. And okay. then um, in 2015, we redeveloped it for ITV2. And so the idea was uh, ITV2 is a channel for 16 to 34 year olds. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is um, how do we reimagine Love Island? Love Island was the format that everyone kind of slagged off at the time, but loved. So you'd go in and you'd try and pitch all of these ideas. Have you got anything that would like Love Island? And you go, well, we've got Love Island. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, they kind of said, yeah, we like it, but it didn't do very well. So it, anyway, ITV2 said, how do you turn uh, Love Island into, or what can you do to attract this audience? We said, well, we've got Love Island and we can totally redo it, reimagine it for this audience. Um, and we did that and we kind of pitched them uh, a, a new version of it. Um, and it's, you know, seems to have gone quite well. And here it is now. <laughs> yeah, because I've been watching it probably for the last three years. And even since then, it's changed so much. I feel like this last year, the year before, seeing how much it took over social media and just like, you couldn't escape it. That was the first conversation you have in the hairdressers when you're in a taxi, like, are oh, you watching Love Island? Oh my God, I love it. And it completely took over. When do you think that change came? Why, why did it happen then and not before? It's been a gradual thing. And I think, uh, you know, any digital channel sort of takes a bit of time to get an audience to it. But you mentioned social media and that's been a huge part of the show. Yeah. And it was something, you know, Tom and the other producers that were involved at the very beginning, we kind of thought, you know, this, this is the medium. And actually, when we pitched it, we kind of said, we don't want celebrities. We want to create celebrities. Celebrities for this audience exist on social media. They don't exist as sort of a, in a traditional way, in the way that we used to think about it. You sort of, you, and we wanted to take people who kind of existed in that world or could exist in that world, put them on this platform, and then, you know, then they become bigger. And they do become celebrities, and it becomes a bigger thing. But I think... Um, you know, that was, that was really important, was putting social media at the heart of it. Um, and that has just grown each year. Yeah. We're going to touch on social media a bit more yep. in a bit. But Caroline, when you joined the show, 2015 you joined, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. How was that for you? Did you know initially in your mind this is going to be a massive thing or was it kind of um and ah and about it? How did you feel when you got asked? No, I mean, it was a no-brainer as soon as they said Love Island because I watched it <coughs> in the first place. But actually, I couldn't do it because I was doing X Factor at the time. Okay. And my agent says, you've been offered to do Love Island, but we're not going to be able to fit it in. And I was like, well, can't we try? And he's like, no. And I kept going back to him, well, I think I'd rather do Love Island. And they're like, no, you've got to do X Factor. I was like, well, can we try? And we really did, went back and forth, back and forth. Um, and we managed to do it. Simon Cowell very kindly let me have a few days off, <laughs> which was nice of him and unusual. Um, but I'd worked with these guys before on one of my first live TV TV shows and it was doing the jungle and when you work with a team like this um, you always fight to go back and work for them again because they're the best yeah. and and I knew the show was going to be reactive I knew the show was going to be live and that's the kind of thing I like doing best and it was about love yeah so I wanted to do that as well and I think you touched on it earlier when people relate to the love side of things but I think also people really relate to the heartbreak side of Love Island and people yeah. are also having their heart broken and yeah. you watch and you think hold on I've been through that and I feel like that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's you were connecting like with it. everybody in there. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> on to uh, casting, which is obviously massive. I don't know. Is there anyone in the audience that would want to go on Love Island? Sue? <laughs> 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 okay. Cool. How do you go about the process? Because that's essentially one of the most important things yeah. of the show, casting. And, yeah. and knowing how in demand it is now, there's going to be a lot of people that just want to go on for yeah. the follower side, but then there's people that genuinely want to find love as well. Yeah. How do you decipher who's there for what and 
basically just talk me through the whole process. Yeah, well, the pro obviously we opened the application process. We opened it at the end of the final that Jack and Danny so won. You can Danny. apply. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know. Um, and so, and we, we get inundated. Now we've got to a stage where uh, last year we had over 100,000 people apply. Um, and I would anticipate more this time round. Um, but we do go out and approach people as well. So we will contact people uh, through Instagram, through social media. Casting team will go out and meet people. People, um, they'll go to clubs, they'll go to shopping centres, they'll go out and look for people as well. They'll contact modelling agencies, extra agencies, all sorts of things. We basically try any route that we can to find people. Uh, but then once that contact has been made, then the process is the same for everybody. So then they're invited to apply. Um, they'll come in for an initial audition with the casting team. Uh, then we, the exec producing team, will watch those initial auditions and then decide who we think we'd like to meet. Um, and then people will come <coughs> in uh, and meet with us. Um, and then that, through that process, we sort of whittle it down to actually quite a big pool yeah. of people. What kind of questions are being asked in those audition stages? Is it like, OK, how many boyfriends have you had? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah everything. Could you give us because... some examples? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the key thing is, basically, you are obviously looking for people who are big personalities, who you know will go into the villa and can sort of hold their own in what is an incredibly intense environment. Um, but you are also looking for people who are going to be open and honest about their feelings. And that is absolutely essential. If we didn't have that, if we didn't have people who were willing to open up to us, then we wouldn't be able to make the show because we ask so much of you guys from that point of view. So a lot of the questions that we ask are going to be, you know, are these people comfortable talking about their love lives? Do we, you know, why did you break up with your last boyfriend? Uh, what's the most embarrassing date you've ever been on? All of the things that you would expect us to ask to really get inside and get an understanding of, of you know, these people's relationship history and what makes them tick and how they think they might be in the villa. We yeah. want them to fall in love. Yeah. They have to be yeah. ready at that point. It's not about coming in and, you know, putting another notch on mm. the bedpost. We want people to come in and genuinely want to find love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your auditions? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I remember. do you remember yeah. your process going through it? Yeah. I, mean, I, was, I was at work one day and I remember I got a message on Instagram just saying, oh, do you want to come to our TV studios? I was like, oh, God, really? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I first was, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know what to do. And then obviously went there. And I just literally said it was like having a chat, really. Like, I hope, like, I'm so open about my feelings now. Since, yeah. Yeah, I'll say <laughs> anything. I don't, yeah, I can say anything now. But yeah, just like a chat about your, your life, really. And, and how many questions do you remember feeling like, oh gosh, do I have to pretend? Or were you completely yourself? I was just completely myself. Yeah. I can't do anything other than that. Anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean, um, it's just talking about literally like, like, you know, past love life and, and stuff like that. Did you ever have in your mind going in, like, okay, my life is absolutely going to change. Is there anything I need to hold back? Or were you just going to, like, take me as I am? Yeah, I was like, yeah, just have me. Don't worry, just have me. <laughs> Literally, yeah, I was, I was just open, just yeah. like myself. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of people being the actual casters, they are quite supportive throughout the process, aren't they? So they, they are trying to find out your personality, but they're going to support you through the whole process of it. Yeah. So how involved are you after you've actually cast? The people. Oh, massively so. And mm. I mean, the, you know, we spend a lot of time chatting to uh, anyone who's going to go into the villa about exactly what to expect from yeah. it. Um, and the casting team become really good. You yeah, know, you, you build up really. Yeah. 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 You need, you need them to yeah. be yeah. yeah. And I think that relationship is so important. And then that continues once they're in the villa as well. And yeah. there's, you know, there is interaction with producers within the villa, and that's really important. And you guys need to feel supported mm -hmm. while you're in there. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And that, those relationships that have been built up over the time from the point of the first audition come into play. Yeah. And that's how we sort of look after them. And you've got a mate for life then. Do you still True. keep in touch with any of the, uh, the people that you met on the show backstage, like behind the scenes? Yeah, no, we do, don't well, we? We do. We've got all their numbers. Yeah. Obviously, you don't have no one's number. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was speaking to Mister. I was speaking to Mister yeah. actually, just chatting. Yeah. 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 So, it's at the front. Yeah. He goes, "What's your number?" It's all like part of a team. It's like a team, big yeah. team. Yeah, it's yeah. lovely. Yeah. yeah. Good.